Hey friends, it's Marla, and I have 14 very fun spring projects, thrift flips, DIYs, all kinds of things. Now here's a vintage fabric bunny. If you don't have vintage fabric, you can get little prints of calico just about anywhere tiny little prints even on thrifted clothing now I got the bunny art door hanger at the dollar 25 tree and I went ahead and took off all the little jute embellishments and I took it apart so that I could work on just each piece individually and then put it back together when I had each piece mod podged what I always do now look you can see I have the uh, I call them my junk scissors I can uh, remove staples with junk scissors <laughs> I can use my junk scissors as a prying tool which you know you should use a screwdriver but you know screwdriver sometimes isn't right beside you so this vintage fabric that I have I've had it a long time I have a stash that I bought at a yard sale of vintage flower sack fabric so I'm cutting it open it's the every every piece of it was washed and folded still stitched together in the size of a five pound sack of flour and I just think that's amazing um, but I've been using these for little projects for years and I have very much enjoyed them I'm outlining the shape of my bunny head with a pencil and then I'll just cut it out with some fabric scissors and now it's time to Mod Podge. I used the back side because I thought that the um, the original bunny face might show through, which wouldn't have been a bad idea, and it would have probably been easier on me because that back side was very porous, and I had to do lots of Mod Podge. Well, at this point, you can see I've done my little carrots with the green tops, and I'm putting his little face back on with some thicker jute and the nose is made of a piece of a cookie box that had orange cardboard on it and then I dry brushed some dark wax around the edges and let that dry so that it would have kind of some shading to it and the eyes are made of pennies and buttons now I just discovered that my thick jute when you when you uh, break it down into the four elements it's kind of curly and I wish I had known that earlier I would have made his whiskers out of the curly jute but anyway he's adorable see how that looks kind of curly that that's the piece of jute up top that was split from the thicker jute <laughs> but look and I did put some antique wax on his mouth because I felt like it didn't show up enough but I'm enjoying that so much and I gave it to Lauren to put on her front door raggy quilt shoes i have an old 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 quilt that's falling apart to such extent that i have decided to use it for different projects and if you've watched any of my diy videos before you've seen me do other projects with this quilt but it just lives on there's so many things i saw the little picture of the shoes in some kind of video that came up as a suggestion on facebook and i thought oh my word i'm going to use vintage quilt so I already had these little jelly pop shoes. They're extremely comfortable. They've got really good memory foam in them, uh, but I've had them a couple of years. I only paid two dollars for them at the thrift store, but um, they could probably use a little uh, magic eraser <laughs> to sharpen them up, whiten them up, but you know, who has time for that? So I took all the laces off and then I cut pieces of uh, kind of matching pieces of quilt just because I could because that's the way the quilt was made and I did use Mod Podge on one of the shoes but then I realized that when it dried it would feel hard and it did but I kind of softened it back up but the hot glue actually was much more effective it worked much better and <laughs> I bet nobody else in this town <laughs> or any town has quilt raggy quilt shoes how funny <laughs> All right, this rustic wicker wreath. I am constantly looking at wicker 
and basket items. They always catch my eye. And this one was so rustic woven and it could, maybe it was the lid of something. I don't know, but I paid a dollar for it and I thought it was adorable. And uh, I decided I was going to make some kind of cute spring looking thing. The little stamp sets from Pop Shelf. Adorable. And you can even get an ink set that, that's metallic colors and brown and white. Oh my goodness. So one set had the floral things and one set had some words. And the fabric that I'm using is, again, from the quilt that's falling apart. I just took a piece and instead of cutting it, I wanted it to look raggedy on the edges. So I just made a little nick, you know, a quarter inch little cut and then I tore and it normally will tear along the, the grain of the fabric. So, it, you know, since I wanted a square, that worked out great. And I'm taking these little pip berries that came from Hobby Lobby in their spring shop collection or Easter. I'm not sure which it was. And I am attaching the, oh, I'm wrapping it around one of those vintage rolling pins. Not rolling, I say that every time bowling pin toys because it was just sitting right there and then here is a one dollar bush of lavender from uh, Walmart and I just clipped a couple of little sections off of that and then I ended up deciding to put it inside that grapevine wreath that had the greenery on it I just sat it in there I didn't even have to attach it because it, it just had enough stuff to sit and hold hold in place that's above my coffee bar at the end of my kitchen and I'm just going to really enjoy looking at that little hello I love the word hello I think it's so friendly <laughs> foam board art now I saw this picture on Pinterest when I was looking for something else and I thought hey I've got uh, an arch top piece of foam that was actually Lauren's wedding menu at the reception we had a really pretty printout my sister had had it made for us and I don't know where you would get foam board that thick but you know it could always be wood it could always maybe be stacked Dollar Tree foam board but I picked out a vintage image and my image wasn't as big as the other image but there's another side to this thing so i'm thinking later you know when it's not springtime and i maybe don't want to look at the eggs but i'm really loving those eggs okay so i, I sponge painted just with a wadded up paper napkin um several colors just to kind of age it and make it look more, a little more textured a little more interesting and i have layered it here in my foyer with I, i've just seasonally change out the greens in that hanging thing now i've got ferns up there now and the eggs they're just gorgeous i just found that image on pinterest and printed it right out it's on an 11 by 17 piece of paper and my vintage books i had a book that looked like exactly the color of that largest egg in the poster and as as per usual, as my habit is, I switch my decor out maybe pff, weekly. I just whenever it strikes me to switch it out, I just switch it out. Now here's a Hobby Lobby dupe. I was in Hobby Lobby shopping with two of my daughters and the grand girls. And I saw this and I said, I've got a wood frame like that and I could do that. So I forgot to check the price, but you know, I don't, I'm guessing what, half, 40% off of, I don't know, 25, I don't know. But I had all this, the right things. So I gave it a fresh coat of paint because I wanted it to not be as uh, brownish as it was. And then um, the little wreath I had gotten on clearance at Dollar General back when their fall items were on clearance. And so that ended up being $2.50. And that adorable little wood rabbit came from Pop Shelf and it was $1. So here I go. Me and my hot glue gun. I'm just hot gluing, going right to town. Getting all that stuff hot glued on there. And it just worked out perfectly. And again with the little pip berries. And I've still got pip berry garland left. It's so pretty. I love pip berries for all seasons. And I thought that was so sweet with all the pastel colors on it. I thought it looked a lot like the colors in the little bunny. I did 
uh, take my sanding block and rough up the edges of that bunny a little bit just to make it look a little less pristine. I don't know. I wanted it to be a little more distressed and worn. Okay, so I had it hanging on my front door. I have a nail in my metal front door that I've got it hanging from down to the little piece of you know wire that goes across. And to keep it from bumping, I just hot glued the bottom edge to the glass. I mean, it won't hurt a thing. And it keeps it from bumping when you open and close the door. But oh, it's so cute. I'm so happy that uh, I happened to see that one at Hobby Lobby and decided to do my own. Transfers on black metal. I had ordered a set of transfers from Amazon and I have gotten a lot of good out of that set of transfers. They're just adorable. They even came with that little stained wood stick there that, that you use to rub. So you just cut out your transfer and you peel the back off. You see how I've got it taped in place. My sister Lisa uh, gifted me with that metal tray. And once it's in place, you just rub until it's stuck to your object, to your item. And it, it couldn't be easier. It's just the easiest thing ever and it ends up so cute. Now this other item I picked up for 99 cents from Goodwill and it looks like some vendor had used it as part of their advertising, but I turned it over to the other side because I love the shape of that. I thought it was adorable. And I found, to, they look at the shabby chic roses and the little sweet cuddly rabbits. They're so cuddly. Oh, they're just sweet. Oh, so sweet. And I really like, I'm loving the way these transfers look on black. I did one on a little box in a previous video. And I've got this hanging uh, over in my hallway slash foyer just above our key hook and this one sitting on an end table and I have put some of those little bottle brush carrots those came from family dollar three for a dollar in a little package they were so cute and uh, you've already seen that rabbit in a thrift haul and the little uh, crochet edged napkin and the little uh, fuzzy woodland he's made of straw so cute that little rabbit brown rabbit was vintage embroidery now I am an embroiderer hand embroiderer and I so appreciated these little vintage works they're they're small they're probably I don't know six inch square seven inch I don't know they're small and they were marked 99 cents each but the day that I got these everything in the store was 25% off so I paid 75 cents each for these and there's no telling how much work someone put into I mean that that's no telling how many hours I'm telling you a lot of hours went into it well they just had it on this green fabric which I love because it matches my bedroom um and they had it stapled with a an office stapler onto it so I had to uh they were they it was kind of wonky in there so i ended up taking those off and since i had them off i was like you know what i think i should like to make these look a little darker so i took some black acrylic paint and sparingly brushed it on and then wiped it back off just so that it kind of gave it uh, a sort of painted look these were real wood frames and i wouldn't have had to wouldn't have had to do any of this to it. I just kind of wanted to. And I, you know, I do, I get some kind of restoration of my soul when I do little painting projects. So I'm, I, you know, I'm going to paint something. If, I, if the mood strikes me, I'm just going to paint it. So you can see me wiping it back down because I did want some of the wood to show through. Now this little shelf uh, was marked a dollar, but it was half price day when I got it. So I paid 50 cents. It's, it's made of cedar. But I wanted to see what it would look like if I did that same method, see if it would look the same as the little frames. And it did, and I thought it looked really cute. So I went over that whole thing with, um, you know, I didn't do a heavy coat of black acrylic. I just did just enough, you know, to wipe back down and just darken it up, richen it up just a little bit. Wouldn't have had to. I didn't dislike it the color it was, but I was just in the mood to paint that day, you know. You know how it is so painting it and then rubbing it back off 
also gives it a, a more vintage and a more worn look so uh, I think I did water it down a little bit and then I decided it was better just to, to brush it on sparingly and then wipe it back off because the watery was too too watery and it wouldn't stick on as well so that's why I'm, I'm showing you a few different methods there that I'm doing not that you can tell because I've got it speeded up like 10 times the speed but you know we'd be here all day if I didn't speed up some of it and uh, yes I burn candles while I do crafts and yes there might be a slight possibility that I would catch my entire projects area on fire but I don't think I would I mean I think I'd notice if I did but I love a candle it makes me calm it makes me feel love and peace now I'm wiping these down again to make sure that there's not any wetness or blob of paint that would ruin the fabric and when I stick these back in this time I'm just going to keep them in place with a uh, just a little dollop of hot glue in each corner it's very lightweight that's all it takes it doesn't it didn't need stapling or anything more serious than just my hot glue and that made it easy and here they are in my bedroom that's the sweetest that's just the sweetest the little shelf and the four little butterflies i just i just think and think what what sort of person what sort of lady sat and had quiet time and embroidered those butterflies i mean it's beautiful they did an excellent job i love the old green fabric that it's on i love the whole thing shabby chic duck now i found and showed you in a previous haul a wooden vintage pull toy a little cart a little wagon and i put mossy grass and put the eggs from hobby lobby in there i only paid 3.99 for this thing at goodwill and i just love it i just love it and then I found this cute little duck. I think at Goodwill. I mean, I, now I'm wondering, but somewhere. It, it, it was thrifted, obviously. Ballet slipper chalk paint. I wanted to I wanted to see what it would look like. I realize it's not a natural color. That ducks do not appear in at nature to be pink. But somehow or other, in my mind, I just was in the mood for a pink duck. So, this ducky... Even though he was cute the way he was, I really thought that orange was a little too bright on his beak and on his feet. So I just said, all right, we're going to use ballet slipper on this thing. And it's going to be cute. And I'm going to love it. And I did. He, he got a coat of white wax to seal the chalk paint. And I just loved doing that. It was the happy, happiest little hour of that day, I think. Well, it didn't take me an hour. It took me way less than that. So... I wanted to attach him to my wagon and you know I might try another method um, I might make something that's a little more like a, a yoke this was just the jute that I happened to have and I just loosely tied it around his neck and then uh, secured it had you know tied it in a knot on that little straight wagon tongue uh, and put a dot of hot glue to hold it in place both on the neck and on the wagon and that was fine but it doesn't quite look as much like mm, the reins or not reins but you know maybe a yoke and harness kind of thing that you might actually see if a if a, a mule or um, an ox or something was carrying a big full-size cart I don't know jute's probably fine it is cute so you know I reserve the right to try a different method. Oh, and I'm also trying to tighten up those wobbly wheels. They're just wobbly all over the place. So I did add a little bit of twine back there and hot glue it in place so those wheels wouldn't uh, wobble at such angles. I wanted them to at least stay straight enough to hold up, <laughs> hold up the cargo of eggs. And... Uh, it was not as easy getting under that little wagon as I thought it might be. And the eggs kept dumping out. At one point, all the eggs kept falling out. And I said, okay, fine. Let's just 
turn the eggs I should have just dumped the eggs out turned it upside down and worked on it upside down but you know that didn't occur to me so here is my pink duck carrying I guess it's a girl duck because she's carrying her eggs around she's got some eggs for the springtime and I love that green mossy grass Walmart sells it it's six or seven dollars for a big bag of it and Hobby Lobby has it but I'm not sure if it's uh, ever on sale at Hobby Lobby so it might be that category floral accents that never goes on sale I don't know and I don't know what the price is at Hobby Lobby either but um, it's a pretty big size bag and it lasts a pretty good while although I'm just about to have to break down and buy another bag of it but I will because I love that green that green is just fun it's the greatest aren't those speckled eggs cute that's only about half the, of the eggs that came in that package it's a pretty good little pretty good little bundle of eggs sitting there with that Martha Stewart scarf or throw that I had gotten for what a dollar or two who can remember but it was thrifted and there you can see little little bits of my other bunny that was in a previous video in the wood box that has also has a rabbit transfer on it bunny wreath I'm just all about the Easter and springtime bunnies aren't I well I found months ago the bunny shaped wreath and I didn't get it from Walmart and I looked to see what kind of decorated ones were <laughs> online but I paid five dollars at my Dollar Tree Plus one the one in Gunnersville has um, the section with a few of the higher priced things in it and this chicken wire one I think is far cuter than the one available from Walmart for ten dollars and something I love the chicken wire and I didn't want to cover it up I wanted the chicken wire to show and you can see that I am again using the raggy quilt scraps uh, <laughs> glued it so that it looked kind of you know kind of like a bow there and then the bottle brush carrots at Family Dollar I just thought those were adorable decided to hang those down in front of the chicken wire it wouldn't it wouldn't cover it up too much I think the example on the tag showed it filled with silk flowers but then you wouldn't be able to see the chicken wire and I love the chicken wire I think that's very cute that's one of the spots in my house that I just have a nail and I just hang things on it whatever I'm in the mood for seasonally antique sign well this was one of those projects where I tried something and I didn't like it and it didn't work here was my inspiration I've been wanting a sign like this for a long time so um, I knew that when I found this long sign for two dollars it's 48 inches long it's very long well seal the original graphics with shellac so that it doesn't bleed through it's not a good idea to just assume your paint will cover it up because even though it was not raised paint in any way it kept bleeding through even through all those colored layers that I thought I was going to let uh, I was going to distress down and let those come through well no I just ended up not doing that because it took so many coats to cover the original words and I was going to just transfer those letter shapes with carbon paper or transfer paper and paint them on but after I went through all the steps and then I dry brushed some gray and a little tiny bit of black I decided just to cut those letters out that I had printed for my pattern I just carefully cut them out I used tiny little scissors and an exacto knife and I decided I would just use use the actual letters to Mod Podge onto this sign and I've never done that before and I've got to say I kind of liked the result I think it looks great I have, I have a beam that used to be I'm sure a wall separating two the living room two rooms the living room and dining room in my house is open now but it wasn't originally in 1972 so they put this big supporting beam there since I guess it was a load-bearing wall and that skinny little shaped sign is perfect for that beam I like to put things on that beam I often put Christmas decorations up there 
but I'm really loving my antique sign. The vintage wood box is actually um, tooled leather, embossed leather, and I just really loved the the designs in it, but I didn't feel like I could see the designs well enough. So here I go. I hope I'm not causing someone to have a, an episode of grief that I have blasphemed this wood, uh, wooden leather box with with the white wax. But I just wanted I wanted the details to show better, and I thought it would be pretty to put the white wax on and then you know wipe it back down mostly so that you could just see the white remaining in those grooves. Of course, you know, can you see that I'm making kind of a circular motion with my paintbrush to get it in every little spot and then I'm going back just with a little paper napkin and wiping it back off and I'm putting it on, wiping it off and I decided to put the tiny little dishes that I was calling them doll dishes but my sister reminded me again I think she's had to remind me of this many times sometimes those tiny little dishes are butter pat dishes and I love them they're so pretty there's five of them there was probably six originally but there's five in the set that I found and every little plate has a different flower on it and then I had a tiny little doily that I added to it and I do have it propped up back where the hinge is I stuck something in there so that it would uh, stand open just enough to see the tiny little dishes and <laughs> be able to see the little sprigs of boxwood and to me the, the details show up so much better with the white wax on there so so I did it I did it on my four dollar antique box sorry if I hurt somebody's feelings by doing that but I love it now, I've done a collage frame art on my last Thrift Flip video. But this was a different idea that I had. I found this one for a dollar or two and two. And I uh, took the glass out this time and used a skirt, a thrifted skirt that I loved the print. And, you know, it wasn't my size, but... I thought, oh, I can make throw pillows for my rose room. I can do springtime crafts. I can do all kinds of things. So you see, I'm kind of tracing the shape of the back. The back was hinged on. It wasn't loose. So I had a little challenge there getting the right size. I ended up kind of cutting it crooked and I had to go back and straighten it up. No big deal. But I put it in there and decided I would just hot glue the edges and that was sufficient that was enough to do it so this was a really quick easy little project i did take the glass out because i wanted the fabric the the texture of the fabric to be what was visible rather than um the glare of the glass you see how it wouldn't close because i had that extra fabric up there at the at the pivot point so i had to trim that off and smoothed it all down <laughs> every little place <laughs> and I had these tiny little wooden spoons they were in the Christmas section at Hobby Lobby and you know sometimes at the front where they have all their seasonal things I just thought they were adorable I think there were six in the original package and <laughs> I'm not sure why anybody needs to frame three wooden spoons but um, and, and then use them in their living room where spoons are not necessarily uh, used <laughs> but I'm quirky and I love doing eccentric little things like that and those those spoons needed a place of honor so that anybody could just enjoy them I wonder if my little grandgirls are going to just pop those right off which I'll glue them back on if they do because they love those spoons they've played with them a few times now I did a full-size broom but this is a cuter whisk broom. When I was in Pop Shelf, I noticed that they had little straw whisk brooms for $3. And I just thought, you know, um, let's, let's see what else we can do with cute little brooms. So I'll probably end up selling this one in my, in my booth because I, how many whisk brooms does one woman need? I really don't need it. But I was in the mood to see if I could make it cuter. So I used the chalk paint in the color Ballet Slipper. And then I took a piece of that same Ralph Lauren 
floral linen skirt and made just a little bow and I did kind of hot glue it in place because I thought well you know if you really use this that bow might come off if you don't secure it just a little bit so I just cutified a three dollar broom and it's adorable and I love that it has pink stitches I pa you know I painted pink on all the green all the way around and it's not hard to do you'd think that it might be hard to keep it off the actual straw but it wasn't it, it's raised up enough if you use a small brush it was just easy oh it's it's cuter in person I'm not sure about the lighting in my kitchen at this point you couldn't really appreciate how pink the stitches are but they're really pink and they're really cute now I, I think that this will be a hit in my booth I may go back to pop shelf and buy some more and maybe do some other shades but pink that's hard to beat I guess I could do pink and I could do the green again but that's my chicken wire frame that I like switching things out. And the other little dustpan and broom came from Hobby Lobby in their spring shop. I don't know if they would still have them at this point in the season. And there's my full-size broom that I painted the stitches on it green and painted the handle green. A little transfer on it. Okay. I have <laughs> decided that my bathroom is just barely big enough to put this hutch in. I was going to flip it and sell it, but it stayed in my garage for a very long time. And during the time it was in my garage, I decided that I wanted it and I wanted to put it in my bathroom. It's okay. There is one little fat man squeeze over there on the side that might be hard to get to, but I couldn't find wallpaper that I liked. So I just printed my own out by finding an image and then I found all my oldest quilts and put them in the top. And as you see, I decided not to use the, it came with three doors, but I didn't, I didn't want to use them. I thought it would be hmm, a little more practical because we actually are using this space on a daily basis. You can see the unused kitchen canisters from my kitchen now are the home for Q-tips and toiletries, soaps, and I've got my perfumes over there on that shelf. And then I have our bath, bathroom, regular bath towels and washcloths. They're folded there. I guess they could be folded a little more attractively. But this is that's just the way I normally fold. And that's probably the way they're normally going to look day in and day out. So there it is. And I do... I'm making good use of the drawers. That's good storage. Oh, and that panel, the wood panel... It, it wasn't a door. It was it would have been a solid thing that you couldn't access the space behind it. So I used a vintage linen runner that already was kind of messed up on one end. So I cut it in half and installed it with a little dowel in there. And now I can get to it's I've got some cleaning supplies and my little um, my little plug in refills and those kind of things. I've got them in a basket and I can slide out easily. Um, yeah kitchen canisters using them way more in the bathroom than I was in the kitchen I've had that set of canisters since I got married in 1988 they're very old and I did make the they were getting kind of rusty so I made them look galvanized did a little paint method on those and I mod podge that paper back there it isn't it isn't wallpaper it's just printed regular regular weight copy paper and the design I had to print several of it so I could match it up just like you would with wallpaper y'all do you know that if you comment on any of my videos I reply to everyone because I love comments I love comments go back and check your comments on some of my videos and see what I've replied to because I don't think everybody knows that I'm commenting I love y'all I hope you have a great day